It's time for us to go to Hume Football and, uh, oh, well, they've avoided uh, virtually uh, all of the chaos that was down in Victoria and then suddenly it's come out of Sydney and caused a whole heap of chaos for the Hume Football League. Phil Buffler is uh, the Vice President. He's been busy this week administering. I think he might have been busy for the last um, six or seven weeks uh, doing that. How are you, Phil? Not bad, Wayne. Been a little bit on on the administrative side of it, so uh, farming, uh, farming's become my hobby at the moment. So, yeah, it's a lot happening. <laughs> uh, it's good that you've had the rain and uh, you haven't been able to get on the paddock. It's been so wet. So uh, I, I guess the weeds are about six foot high right now. Mate, I'm just uh, when I finish talking to you, I've got a, a pasture paddock to spray, then I'm going to start spraying my fire breaks, and Monday we start cheering. So it's all happening here, Wayne. And I'll tell you what, you'd be pretty glad that uh, Gladys has put the lockdown in because you've got uh, an extra day and two this weekend to actually get something done. That's it. I got my and a double lockdown because I'm always because I was in Canberra a couple of weeks ago, so I've been locked out of Canberra. So I'm in that lockdown already. The plus I'm in the other one, so I'm, I'm a double lockdown. So I'm just not sure what that means at this stage. <laughs> I tell you what, there were some players that knew what it meant uh, when they were on the footy field, and somebody said we got to get home by five o'clock, and they said, well, hang on, the footy game doesn't finish till ten to five. Uh, they decided to get uh, uh, cutting them short, and poor old Holbrook or Guesty was kicking goals from everywhere and uh, wanting to win the goal kicking in one match and uh, they had to shorten the game. 30 goals, 19 to 1 goal, 1. It was uh, frantic, uh, but it wasn't so much frantic um, from the Murray Magpies. They were frantically trying to get home while Holbrook wanted to kick more goals. Mate, that was just a bit of a problem last weekend at 5 o'clock. I mean, fair dinkum, who thinks of these things? Why it wasn't a 10 o'clock one or something like that? It's just beyond me. There's a lot of sport played regionally and, um, you know, as I say... You know, a lot of these people, I mean, she's basically become the Premier for Sydney. You know, there's an area outside of Sydney, so anyway, I don't want to get political about it, but it was a poor decision, another one. It was a very poor decision, and because it meant that um, uh, folk were scurrying everywhere, and uh, the uh, Murray Magpies, uh, well, they had to get back some of them uh, in Victoria. I think, too, uh, there might have been uh, Billabong Crows and Henty in the same boat to, with a number of their players. Gestia did boot the 12. It got him right up high in the goal, kicking McKinlay and Hamilton and Tredalvin were amongst it, along with Smiths and Triggs. A lot of goal kickers there when you kick 30, and uh, Gestia, the best player, and Teasdale got the only one for the Magpies. Martin tried hard for them. And the match that we mentioned here, the the uh, Henty side, 12 goals, 476. If you don't mind, Phil, it's put them into the finals in sixth place because they beat the Billick Bong Crows 10 to 62. I think they might have shortened the quarters or something here, but the Crows, uh, well, they were really trying hard towards the end and uh, almost snatched an unlikely win. Mate, that was right. So that was another game that had to be shortened and that was just the circumstances we were dealt with. Um, you know, so uh, Henny snuck in, uh, Lockhart lost, and uh, yeah, they sort of um, masters their own destiny a little bit, so that's what happened. Uh, Turley, you know, he won the goal kicking for the league, he kicked four, I think, so uh, you know, he's playing well. Um, you know, let's hope we can get a final series going. Oh, absolutely. He's been a star this season, hasn't he? He's uh, really uh, been uh, very, very good for Hens. He kicked some big bags, 58 for the home and away series from his 13 matches. He was um, amongst the good players, but I thought uh, the best player was Skier, Hoare, Smith, Connell, also amongst it. And then it was Flanagan, Beal, Evans, Satori. Good to see young Zach Satori playing some good footy. Morris and Cameron. And uh, Cameron and Flanagan and Evans all booted two there. And, uh, of course, uh, gee, they really... Uh, have uh, struggled uh, the Billabong Crows and uh, disappointing after such um, uh, great hope the year before. But other matches, uh, Randwell Bundry Waller beat CDHBU 15 17 to 10 7. Gee, the Giants um, went over to Kareen and they showed why they're going to be a force in the final series. Oh, they play pretty well, you know, like uh, you get to the point end of the season and, uh, you know, that's when you had a bit of momentum building. So the Giants have got a bit of momentum. Uh, Ward is nine goals. Um, you know, they've got Merkel back. Uh, he's playing well. Um, you know, the Ducks keep playing well. It's just uh, they've got a pretty good side, uh, the Giants, so it, it'll be fascinating to see what happens in the finals. And it was Cannon with four for the Kareen and Smith booted three. Pratt, uh, Kusha, Rhodes from Ferguson all got in there and uh, tried hard for the power. And uh, a win for Brock Barham over Calcan. It was 18 19, 127 to 10, 6, 66. Uh, even with um, uh, the fact that we're getting to the end of the season, Brock Barham have had a number of major injuries. Cupido got going for nine. Uh, Garland kicked four and I'll tell you what uh, Brock Barham won't be easily done by uh, when we get to play football again well, Speaking of momentum, how are these blokes going? Uh, they had a bit of a dull patch in the middle when they had a few injuries uh, Suda, Sedgwick, they're back, Cupido's kicking goals, I mean if he gets a kick within 50 metres, he's a hell of a good kick still so uh, you know that's almost a guaranteed goal so if him kicked nine, that was unreal and it was it Ronnie Bolton, I think he played his 200th game so that was a great effort from him as well 
Yeah, they gave him the best play, and uh, rightly so. I Anson got amongst it, Mac and Talent also. And Chester with five and Pryor a couple, and uh, Chester, Noble, Logue and uh, Gould were uh, very good players. Um, uh, good write-up on that Logue this week um, uh, in the paper. What about uh, these boys from uh, Osborne? 23-10, 148, went down to Jindera and, uh, well, absolutely belted them uh, there in the end. Jindera 2-6-18. Jindera have been good of recent weeks, but, gee, this... This was uh, a clean up by Osmond. How good are they? Uh, they're pretty good. I mean, talking about momentum, Osmond have got a swag of it. So, um, you know, we're heading into the game. Uh, Ginger have been playing well, and I thought this would have been a little bit closer. But no, uh, Osmond put the foot down, and that's it. Good night. So um, I'll see uh, Joel Mackey, their coach, is back. I think he kicked five or six goals. So, um, you know, that's another handy acquisition. So, uh, you know, does it ever end? You know, they've got all the young blokes playing well. Um, young Eddie O'Connell had another good game. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen with them. I'm not sure how they're going to be stopped. No, I don't know, but i uh, tell you what, they stopped Galvin for Jindere. He's been kicking big bags recently, didn't hit the score sheet. But on the other side of it, uh, Mackie 6, Rava 4, Stenning 3. That's Schmetzer. He's a good young footballer too. D Galvin and Jay Parr, two goals for Osborne's at Galvin there. And Rava, McMaster, Mackie, Wiedemann, E. O'Connell and Rutland were the better players for the um, black and gold. And the Bulldogs had um, Kalina, Lawrence and Speed, who uh, were pretty good. And... Uh, that left us this game and it was a big shock when you're a master of your own destiny uh, you've got to get the job done and uh, how long uh, surprise down at the Arana Oval was uh, Lockhart's home game there and it might just have been that picking Arana wasn't the right venue for the D's because um, how long have bit them 10 18 78 to 7 10 52 I reckon that spider that's up on that um, water tower next to the old sail yards I reckon it just got off of there and came down and bit Lockhart over the road. We had a bit of a graveyard that um, oval over the years, Wayne. So anyway, I rang Bob Matthews Monday morning to make sure he got back alive. So he's good. <laughs> um, no, bit, there's been a lot of hard luck stories in the year, you know, um, and, and this was probably not much different. Um, um, two of their better players, Lockhart, Zach Schuther and uh, um, uh, Emery, um, they were um, caught up in that Canberra lockdown. They both work in Canberra, so they weren't playing. So that didn't do Lockhart's chances any good, but... You know, you can look at this one game in isolation, but there are games earlier in the year they should have won, so, you know, should have, could have, would have. That's just the way it goes. It is. Uh, Ferregia and Baker Williams also kicked two for how long? And it was Mazay and Newman and Cook, the better players. Harrington, great season from him. He's uh, one that could be right high up in the best and fairest award. Um, Haybrick uh, with a couple too. And it was Haybrick, Krebs, Harrington and G. O'Connell who played well for the days. They'll be very disappointed to be dropping out. OK, it means uh, with the circumstances, if we get back playing, uh, and Phil, this is the big question, but just say um, by Wednesday or Thursday, uh, the powers that be in uh, George Street there, uh, they uh, make the decision that uh, we uh, are back and we can have uh, the regions opened up again. Would you then next week play a Saturday and Sunday for those uh, two elimination finals? We're stenciled in, Wayne, so normally we would have been playing round 18 this weekend, so that's obviously we've um, that's been halted. So we just said, right, oh, that's the end of the home and away season. Let's get on to the finals and get something up and happening. Sensibly, you know, if it, if it if sense which doesn't seem to get much of a run in politics, you'd think that, um, you know, the southern region should escape the lockdown. It's been 12 months since there's been a case vaguely anywhere near here. So, um, you know, I don't see why the whole of the state needs to be locked down. So maybe there's a little bit of wriggle room and with a bit of luck we can get out. So we should have a Saturday and a Sunday final and, um, you know, the two elimination finals. So then we'd be down to four. So we're really hoping we can get, we're going to have a meeting, the league's meeting this week on the Zoom to try and get some... Ideas going, we'll contact catering clubs. So at this stage, we're hoping and we're going to sort of build towards having finals in two weeks. OK, so the venues for those finals, uh, is there uh, sort of a, a view on that, uh, that they would uh, that you wouldn't be able to have them, say, at Lockhart or Osborne at the moment because of what could potentially be those um, the ovals not able to be used? Or with the Victorian situation changing, are they going to be back to normal? Well, that wouldn't be used anyway. Well, Bundry is headquarters for the finals, and um, we've got one game for five of the six finals will be played at Bundry, then the second Sunday will be played at home. How long? But, you know, if the push comes to shove, we've got options with other grounds. So uh, we've used the um, uh, Urana Road Murray Magpies ground for a final two years ago in 19. 
Uh, we've got the howl on ground. We can have it. So, you know, it's, this is the things we've got to look at. So we're willing to, um, you know, look outside the box a little bit just to make sure we can get the final series up and running and completed. Yeah. Gee, it's a hard thing for programmers. I really feel for uh, Belinda Anderson and her team over there at uh, the Henty Machinery Field Days have uh, been delayed now till next March. Uh, uh, just to uh, look at a um, nightmare for people like you, Phil, who, um, as you say, uh, you've become a full-time administrator and a part-time farmer this week and over the last few months. So uh, it uh, is a credit to you blokes and uh, the ladies too that are all involved with netball and uh, getting this up and happening. Uh, it, it really is... Um, hard work that you're putting in. Oh, it's hard to do the right thing, Wayne. You know, so you should worry about it a bit and you're making the right decision and stuff like that. But, I mean, so far, everything we've made has um, been fairly spot on the money, I think. So uh, there's always a few critics and that sort of thing. But anyway, that's just the way it goes. So, um, you know, we couldn't have had this round, so that's fine. Let's move on to finals and uh, hopefully we'll get a bit of sense out of that. We'll just need to make opportunities as they arise. We need to do it. So, you know, the, the, potentially we could have... Um, on, on a Saturday, we could have two lots of fires at two different grounds just to get them played. So I think while there's a window of opportunity, we need to make the most of it. Yep, yep. That's great um, uh, thinking and uh, look at everything that's on the table. The um, league president uh, and also the vice president and the club presidents will be on a Zoom meeting. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of that happening this week when uh, you should be out spraying those crops out there, Phil. I'm going to let you get back to that spraying job you've got to do. You take care. Good on you. Thanks, Wyatt.